The best kind of doors are the doors you have to explain. All right. Welcome, welcome to Unhinge with the Door Dork. Today, we do have two very special guests, um, Mr. Bryce and Tom from Capital Lock. I'll jump on to the next one. Bryce and Tom were generous enough to send over a couple photos from their own stock. We like to call them adventures. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. What their team has found out, out in the wild. And so um, these next two photos are going to be because of uh, Capital Lock. So thank you guys for uh, contributing. And I'm excited to see this. This is my favorite, though, because we don't often have the backstory. So today we'll get that because often it leaves more questions. <laughs> right. Okay. Are you guys ready? We are. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I'll give a little bit of the backstory on this one. We were doing a walkthrough uh, at a hospital here, and they have some medicines that need to get stored in a cabinet. And so the solution that the uh, previous locksmith or installer decided to do is they took a salto mortise lock meant for a door, turned it on its side, and installed it into a drawer. So they used a door mortise lock as their uh, card access for a medicine drawer. And uh, it surprisingly is cut in really well and it actually functions as planned. Wow, who would have thought that could have worked? Yeah, we were walking through the facility trying to uh, identify where these were at and uh, my locksmith looks over and he's been doing this for about 30 years. He, he caught his eye and he's like, is that a lock on a drawer? And he walked over there and sure as shit, there it is. He, he said this is probably one of the most creative solutions he's ever seen in his 30 years is a mortise lock for a door installed on a drawer. Yeah, that's definitely creative. I've never seen anything like that before. It, it's almost like Salto needs to have the cabinet lock or something. I, I feel like they actually have a solution for this. Yeah, so uh, they have about 40 cabinet locks throughout the facility. So I don't know if this was just a leftover and they said, you know, some guy said, I'm going to get creative on this one. It wanted a challenge. I don't know what they were thinking, but well executed, it functions. I appreciate it, especially if they're going to use one of uh, our mortise locks as the functionality. I, I, I love it. Yeah, I would have been worried that in a laying down orientation, all the components inside would have still done what they were supposed to do. I've never really thought about it. I've never really thought about turning the mortise lock on its side and then making sure it continues to function so good um and this probably if they had them laying around great if they purchased them for this this cost them many times more than what they needed to spend on this solution but if it's working i mean that lever also acts as a great drawer pull it, yeah. it's true i'm just now like trying to orient myself lever is perpendicular like a regular lever like you would use it to pull it open but like you would also use it to does it latch that way is it no, so they actually they actually turn the lever so it's 90 degrees, I think with just the set screw. We didn't take it all the way apart, um, but they turned it so it, that is it's, you know, how it is normally is. And then you can pull up or down after scan, just like I get, if it was on a normal door, you'd be going left and right. But yeah, there's nothing that would really prevent you from doing that, even on any of the like Osaboy product, like the mortise levers, just how they're mounted, right? You could, yeah. there's nothing to say as an industry, we couldn't decide to go with this <laughs> orientation. So yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting way to solve a problem. Unique application. I love it. I would like to see like how, how they even thought of that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it took some, some custom fabrication just to make it work. So I, it's not clear what exactly they were thinking. On that discussion on the uh, inside of the drawer, it kind of looks like there's a key cylinder there. I cannot remember if there actually was a key cylinder in there or not, but somebody actually could, if it's a classroom function, make that unlocked and then it kind of makes the card access not so effective. So possible issue. If this uh, runs out of batteries or like, I know there's like systems in place to help that not happen, but that you could have a locked drawer. You might have to bust open this drawer. I'm just curious on how many times someone has run into that, you know, caught their lanyard on it or, you know, anything looking down into that drawer. I'm sure people have thought about that of, oh, well, why is this thing on here? You know? Yeah, I'm glad it has the return on there. If it was just a, a standard lever, that's probably like catching people's hips all day long. And being a hospital, like there's carts and beds and like, especially if this right. is for pharmacy use or, or drug use, like those, they have those carts that they're always running around that are locked down with the drugs inside of them. Okay. Any last comments before we give it a knocking score? What do you guys think? I say we rate it. Well, you know, it's overall still pretty functional. It serves its purpose. Obviously, you know, touching on Mia's point, they probably went way over budget with it. I'm going to give it a 1.2 because, you know, I like the ingenuity. 
Now that you pointed out, catching the handle, I don't know if there's uh, fire and life safety codes for drawer handles and if, uh, if that's a factor at all, but, and also, like I said, maybe the lock cylinder on the inside could cause a security issue if it can be made unlocked. I'm going to give this a 2.1 just for a, uh, a slight uh, risk there, but still overall uh, very functional and effective for what they were uh, trying to accomplish. I'm going to go with a 1.5. 1.5. Because luckily it doesn't have to do with entering or exiting any place in the building. It's just to house medication. And since we have levers on doors, I'm not worried about anybody hooking themselves on. And since it has a return, that's there to prevent anything like hoses or anything from getting hooked. And if they're catching their lanyards, they should have breakaway lanyards as part of their hospital policy. So risk is low with the exception of being able to unlock it with the key inside and override the access control. I'm going to give this an eight or a nine on creativity. <laughs> there we go. There we go. No, I, I think it's a genius that they came up with something like this. And in the world, word genius, just thinking outside of the box, like thinking outside of the norm, it probably has a better, a higher security than your average cabinet lock bonus points for them. And maybe that's was their idea behind it as they wanted extra security on there. But yeah, as far as a knocking score, not not too knocking bad. One one or two, maybe. Okay. You guys ready for the last photo? This one's a doozy. Oh yeah. Took the words out of my mouth. You can notice quite a few violations and life safety code as in addition to fire code here. So the background story on this one, uh, I was the one who took this picture out in the field. You can see one of our techs pointing at it directly and laughing there. He's the one with 30 years of experience out in the field. So this is a fire door into the stairwell. As you can see, there is a deadbolt on there. And then where the exit sign is supposed to be displayed, they crudely taped a cardboard cutout over. So it used to be a library and uh, they were renting out the basement to people who play Dungeons and Dragons and they didn't want the Dungeons and Dragons people to be able to access the other levels and come up. It has since then been bought out by a medical clinic. Uh, so we told them, you know, we need to get this right and uh, convert it back over and make sure we're up to fire code here. What it comes down to was Dungeons and Dragons. That is fantastic. Yeah, you got to keep them down in Dungeon, you know, like at first I was like, oh, they taped over the exit sign. They must have converted this to something else, you know, because in previous episodes we've had something happen and they've left the exit sign up there. Right. And so I was like, oh, good for them. They've at least covered that it's an exit. No, no. Yeah. Unfortunately, no, this still goes down into the basement and about 30 feet down the hallway on the other side there, there is the fire exit. Not a great one here. We were uh, telling them, you know, sort of with a sense of urgency of we need to get this fixed. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing Mia when I first saw this photo was like oh it's no longer an exit like the occupancy or they remodeled or something changed and it's no longer a needed exit but especially if it's now a medical clinic that adds extra layers of code on top of that and so that this is definitely not okay wow this is this is pretty bad yeah and unfortunately it's probably something you're just gonna have to replace the whole door and frame I mean you could potentially fill it that's a tough one yeah, Bryce is now certified as a fit fire door inspector. So we were kind of looking to devise a plan of, okay, can we salvage this door? Is there a proper way we can do this where it is still going to be a fire door? But unfortunately, I think we are going to have to uh, order a new door for this one. Yeah, I, I think at least it's going to have to get recertified because once you remove that deadbolt, that's you're losing a lot of the integrity of that fire door. And that's right. going to be a penetration point for fire and smoke. I can't tell what kind of deadbolt it is. If it's large than an inch cut out. And that's the whole thing. It is a quick set. So I believe that was what inch and an eighth. So it's already more than the inch. So yeah. I appreciate that they matched the finish of the deadbolt to the exit oh, yeah. device. You don't normally see that on jobs like this, guys. <laughs> Unfortunately, it might have been my photography skill. Um, um, it is a 612 on the uh, exit device. And then it's a 619. Lack of uh, good lighting and <laughs> not great photography skills by me. So. All right. So my point is proven. You don't normally see them get matched in after the fact, but right. from here, yeah, it looked like it was matched. What, what's up with the little coat hanger on there? Like, like um, they used to I, hang uh, a sign on there saying Dungeons and Dragons in session. So, you know, you wouldn't interrupt their quest. You know, to be fair, at least uh, it looks like it's a command hook, so it's just stuck on there. So at least they didn't drill a hole for that. You know, no, <laughs> no uh, fire code violation on that one. 
also if if they were removing this as an exit that that cardboard sign is not compliant either you would still have to remove the sign and make sure all the signs leading down to this pathway is removed as well and you would have to have another form of egress depending on the occupancy of the building as well i heard that they replaced that piece of cardboard they they used to tape up a different sign depending on what land they were in for dungeons and dragons so this is not the exit you're looking for <laughs> <laughs> exit if you dare yeah and then are you you know, our locksmith uh, was talking about too, if there's ever, you know, especially in today's day and age, sort of the code red, someone intruder in the building that shouldn't be in there. That's really your only exit on that side of the building. No, this, this is, this is one of the worst I've seen, I think. Any last comments before we give it a knocking score? This one's a doozy. I think we pretty much covered it all and all the lands that could possibly be associated with it. I'm going to go with a 9.1. You know, in, in my career, this is the worst one I've seen. I mean, as a uh, now certified fire door inspector, I, I think I have to give this a 10. It is just unacceptable and uh, it needs to be taken care of ASAP. So uh, I'm going to give it a Bryce Clark 10 on this one. It can't function as it's intended. Yeah, it's probably going to have to be a 10. Right? You yeah. can't get out. If, if if there's a fire, you can't get out here. Yeah, it's pretty black and white on this one. I know sometimes we have a little bit of gray area, but especially now that we know the behind the scenes story of why that's set up in this application, Dungeons and Dragons, that's very important, but it sounds like it's a very dangerous quest that they just campaigned. And, you know, you think about all the dragon fire that might be associated. You got to have that fire exit. I'm, I'm with you guys. We might We might have another 10. Pumping up the scores. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bryce and Tom, for uh, joining us. It's a pleasure having you on the show, especially after meeting you in person at the MSC conference and learn a little bit more about your guys' business. It's awesome to put your hardware nerds together. It's awesome when we come together. Um, thank you uh, as well, Mia, for uh, hosting and putting this, this amazing show on that we can learn and laugh and cry all at the same time. Um, and uh, make sure you guys join us for the next episode of Unhinged. Our doors are always open because they're unhinged. Uh, if you want to be featured on a future episode of Unhinged, please leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.